The film opens with John Wick makes his way to a warehouse controlled by Abram Tarasov with the intention of retrieving his stolen car. Abram craves vengeance against John for the deaths of his brother Vigo and nephew ISF. As John eliminates Abram's security team one by one, he finally reaches his car. But his escape isn't smooth, he faces an onslaught from hordes of Abram's henchmen. Even though John's car bears the brunt of their attacks, he remains steadfast and single-handedly defeats them all. Upon reaching Abram's office, John opts for diplomacy, he pours drinks for both himself and Abram as a gesture of peace. However, Abram can't help but wonder if John will ever truly find tranquility. Upon arriving home, John is greeted by the yet-to-be-named dog he adopted at the conclusion of the first film. He promptly summons Aurelio to collect his severely damaged car, and despite its disastrous state, Aurelio assures John it can be repaired. After his departure, John resolves to abandon his life as an assassin and proceeds to reinter his arsenal beneath a layer of concrete. In a quiet moment, he reminisces by watching a heartfelt video on his phone featuring him and his dearly departed wife. John arrives at the prestigious Continental Hotel, eager to meet Winston and discuss the intricacies of the marker and Santino's demands. However, Winston is powerless to intervene since John has sworn an oath, and any refusal would put his life at stake. Reluctantly, John departs, entrusting his loyal dog to Sharon, the hotel's expert concierge. Determined to fulfill his duty, John travels to the ancient city of Rome. He checks into its continental counterpart, managed by the enigmatic Julius. Meanwhile, John liaises with a web of contacts to secure an arsenal of deadly weaponry, essential for his mission to eliminate the cunning Gianna. John goes to a party where Gianna is essentially being crowned. She is guarded by her faithful protector, Cassia. John approaches Gianna in private and reveals that Santino sent him. Deciding to end her life on her own terms, she slices her wrists. As Gianna lies in a pool of blood, John comforts her by holding her hand, and then shoots her in the head to make it appear as if he was responsible for her death. As John makes his exit, Cashin catches sight of him and immediately realizes he's back in the game. With lightning reflexes, Cashin attempts to draw his gun on John, but he's no match for John's speed. Eluding capture, John begins his relentless pursuit of the hitmen who are hunting him down due to Gianna's death. One by one, they all fall victim to John's deadly aim as he makes his escape. Cashin, refusing to give up, eventually catches up to John and engages in a fierce battle that culminates with them crashing through the window of the Continental. Bound by the rule that no blood can be shed on Continental grounds, the two adversaries decide to have a drink at the bar and discuss their predicament. John reveals the marker and explains how Santino ordered him to kill his sister. Although Cashin understands, he cannot let his ward's killer walk away unpunished. With a respectful nod, Cashin pays for John's drink and departs. Suddenly, John's attention is drawn to Ares, Santino's silent bodyguard. Through sign language, she ominously signals her intent, it won't be long before they meet again. As John makes his way back to New York City, Santino cunningly places a staggering $7 million bounty on his head. Word spreads like wildfire among the concealed killers lurking nearby. In an unexpected turn, a seemingly innocent violinist in the subway swiftly draws a gun from her instrument, attempting to eliminate John. However, he skillfully overpowers her and snaps her neck. A burly Asian man takes his chances, only to meet a gruesome fate with his brains blown away. Noticing the commotion in the subway, two other men try their luck, only to be savagely slaughtered by John, using nothing but a pencil. Cashin finally catches up with John on the subway train and engages him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In a tense moment, John pierces Cashin's aorta with a knife and warns him that removing it will be the death of him. Leaving Cashin to contemplate his fate on the subway, John dashes off and encounters an undercover assassin posing as a homeless man. Desperate for assistance, he turns to the mysterious figure just as two assassin janitors pursue him. His newfound ally silences the janitors in cold blood. 
Seeking refuge, John turns to the Bowery King, an assassin who once faced off with John and was left with a lasting reminder of their encounter, a scar on his neck. Having been spared by John, the Bowery King now considers himself invincible. Aware of the substantial bounty on John's head, the BK offers his assistance in tracking down Santino's location. Determined and ready for action, John infiltrates a museum where Santino is to be appointed his position at the high table. Undeterred and relentless in his pursuit, John interrupts the festivities and begins eliminating Santino's henchmen one by one. As he chases Santino through a labyrinth of mirrors, John finds himself in combat with Ares. Overcoming the challenge, he ultimately stabs Ares and leaves her to meet her fate. In a desperate bid for safety, Santino races to the Continental, aware that its sanctuary would protect him. John, relentless in his pursuit, discovers him lounging about. Sensing the impending confrontation, Winston attempts to defuse the situation and soothe John's rage. However, John's fury remains unquenched as he delivers a fatal shot to Santino's head. With resolve, John moves on to retrieve his loyal dog from Sharon. The following day, John takes his canine companion to rendezvous with Winston at the park. Winston reveals that John's actions on continental territory have caused the high table to double the bounty and broadcast it to assassins worldwide. Although he must declare John excommunicado, Winston grants him a one-hour reprieve before the contract comes into force. Suddenly, it dawns on both of them that each individual in the park is a skilled assassin, eyes fixed intently on their target. He warns Winston to inform everyone that any attempts on his life will result in their swift deaths, to which Winston complies. As John departs, word spreads quickly among passers-by who eye him warily, fully aware of his identity and their own dark intention. With no other option, John grabs his dog and continues his desperate sprint for survival. So, the movie ends here. This action-packed sequel continues the storyline of the skilled assassin John Wick, played by the incredible Keanu Reeves. The film picks up where the first one left off, bringing us deeper into the world of assassins and crime syndicates. The action sequences in this movie are simply breathtaking, with intense gunfights and breathtaking hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes that keep you on the edge of your seat throughout its runtime. In addition to Keanu Reeves' stellar performance, the supporting cast featuring Ian McShane, Common, and Ruby Rose also contribute to making this sequel just as engaging as the first film. The cinematography is striking, and the soundtrack complements every thrilling moment perfectly. John Wick Chapter 2 not only lives up to its predecessor but exceeds expectations with refined storytelling and jaw-dropping action. If you love the first movie or are a fan of action films in general, you won't be disappointed with John Wick Chapter 2. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this recap, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more content like this. Have a good day and see you all in the next video.